Hi everyone and welcome to the uh, next instalment of Joachim and Marcus's group build wheeled vehicles in military use as you know I am converting Airfix's 135th scale Austin K2 into the ambulance that's used in the film Ice Cold in Alex better known as Catty uh, today we're going to be looking at the back end and first of all what we needed to do was to uh, tackle the issue with the stretchers as you can see there's some nice PE additions that can go on so first of all we uh, snipped off the um, legs for the stretchers uh, so that we could uh, install the uh, photo etch ones but as I was doing all this I had a good look at these um, stretchers and they really are poor as you can see very thick uh, we've got all the issues there on the back um, and really I just wasn't happy with them at all and I wanted to try and make them a, a, a little bit more realistic so I made the decision to um, pretty well much destroy, destroy these and make some new ones uh, so the handles were all cut off uh, initially and then I got some of the green stuff out and uh, used that as a, the old one for a template and just made it a little bit bigger and then used some square rod stuck the kit handles on the end and then uh, I just basically um, drooped over the uh, green stuff let it dry overnight um, around the uh, square rod um, to give me a, a base from which to work and as you can see a lot thinner a lot more realistic um, and a lot more pliable so I was really pleased uh, with how they turned out now on the sides they're a li little bit scruffy so those were all tidied up and straightened up with a craft knife and that's quite a simple process because obviously the green stuff doesn't stick to the plastic until you use some CA glue. So I just took took off each pole and cut it all down to size and stuck them back on. So I started with the PE um, legs, just a matter of wrapping it around a cocktail stick. And as you can see, there's some 0.5 mil rivets added as well. And then uh, we had some uh, strengthening bars from the PE set as well so the underneath was looking really good now as you can see from this still of the film there's loads of rivets going along the side now there's no way i'm going to do them that size because uh, they'll look like dust so i decided to go for the smallest rivet i had with my rp tools punch which is 0.5 i have a collection tray that the great uh, simon t made for me god rest his soul um, and also he made me a holder for the punches as well um, and then it's just a matter of finding the size that you want um, 0.5 I went for got myself a little bit of pewter strip and then it's just a matter of placing that inside the uh, hole punch and then away we go and just make as many as you can build up a collection and then obviously as you're doing this uh, the uh, tray uh, which was from a 3d printer um, collects those uh, rivets underneath and then it's just a matter of getting some CA glue out and start sticking those along the side of the stretcher and there we have it um, not brilliant but uh, I think once painted up uh, it will certainly look a lot better and I, it certainly was an improvement on the kit parts now the actual uh, place where the stretchers go uh, you can see some uh, little cushions here uh, they do not appear in the film so uh, th those were binned um and then it was just a matter of starting to put some detailing on the uh, stretchers racks um, so using the pe set um, i used the old plastic part and just molded it around um, these are a little bit big um, not quite sure what happened here but um, i didn't have time to uh, change them uh, but if you want to please feel free to do so the ends of the racks, uh, they have little plastic loops. Uh, those were cut off because, again, there was PE replacements, as you can see here. Um, these were stuck straight up. They should be at an angle, so, so that was changed later anyway. And this is the issue that I was talking about the other ones. The, these should go underneath the rail, whereas they're that big. They actually go alongside it. So um, if you're following along, then maybe that's something you may wish to look at and change. So that was all four of those done on each side of the uh, ambulance. Now, as far as the side panels go, you've got these little grills here. Um, just to make them a little bit more realistic, um, what you can quite easily do is just get the end of, um, I don't know if you've got an auger, um, uh, I actually use uh, the end of my uh, 
little pincers there and just groove tweezers sorry and just groove out nice and easily some of the plastic and that gives you a more realistic look saves you having to make new ones so I was quite pleased to how that all turned out now Airfix for some unknown reason completely forgot to put the detailing uh, with the beading down each side of the outside panels so that was easily done now the next part of this build uh, involved uh, one side of the ambulance as you can see had lots of repair patches on it now the one with the actual cross you can see is a lot larger than the actual painted on one and we have a couple of um, dodgy looking ones at the end as well so for me the best way to do it was with the green stuff again so I did a little template measured it out uh, so I had a guideline of where I was going to be putting the patches and then really just using the uh, PE bending tool uh, as my cutter it was just a matter of, I did this pretty much freehand so it was just a matter of um, cutting, placing, cutting, placing until I was happy uh, with the size now it was very important that, that you roll out the green stuff extremely thin um, we want to give the impression of the patch rather than having a big lump of um, green stuff on, on the side panel so once I was happy that I'd cut it to size it's just a matter of placing it making sure it's okay and then putting it into some water this is basically to take off all the talcum powder and also it'll give you a li little bit of adhesion uh, onto the plastic um, and then once it's in place just basically leave it for 24 hours to harden um, and then once it has hardened uh, you can quite simply take them off get some CA glue and just glue them back on again so there we go I was quite pleased with how that was progressing and there we have all of them done once they were dry and stuck on I then added some texture and some stitching etc just with the end of some tweezers and some uh, sculpting tools this little flap here in the film that one is actually loose so I've left that loose as well so yeah really pleased with how that was now looking um, with Airfix there's two panels the inside and the outside so it was a matter of gluing them both together left that overnight to dry now the next part um, these little um, vents at the front and the back are in fact cloth vents um, so I wanted to make those look a little bit more realistic so it's a matter of getting out the drill and uh, drilling out each of these particular areas and then once that was done I put some uh, green stuff over the top allowed that to dry overnight and then once that was uh, fully hardened um, it was a matter of just sanding it back just a little bit until the plastic came through and then getting a very sharp knife um, it was just a matter of cutting it to size cutting around it did in fact come off really well um, and I was really pleased with how, how, how the final look was now if you do watch the film uh, the back end is full of holes uh, but, but I was a bit concerned if I did that on my building everyone would think it would look rubbish but again it's a bit of realism if you do want to do it that the back end is all falling apart in the film now as far as the interior goes uh, we had some lovely um, detailing set here uh, from Eduard with the photo etch with the fans and also the, the size of the light but to be fair the airfix kit detail wasn't too bad and the amount of hassle and stress that I would have to go through just to put those little strips in it I just really did not think it was worthwhile um, as you can see it all have to be bended everything would have to be stripped out so quite frankly all I did was just replace the rivets um, possibly a little bit bigger than what they should be the 0.5s but uh, it's inside you, you're hardly going to see it so I was more than happy to go down that road than have all the grief of ripping all of that out now the top side that had a nice little PE uh, surround as well for rivet detail as you can see here so I was really pleased with how that looked however as I was doing my research I noticed that one of those are actually circular on the one in the film so I had to cut it all out make a hole fill that hole in uh, with some plastic hard and some filler sand it all back um, and then it was a matter of making my own one um, with some plastic card uh, discs and then ju just put a little bit of strip inside to uh, imitate the actual uh, fan itself 
I'm not too sure about this yet. I think it may be a little bit on the small side. I'm not sure. Um, I may redo that, but uh, at the moment I'm quite happy with uh, the way it's all looking. Now inside we have a couple of boxes by the back door. Uh, again, the PE set gives you a nice um, door to put on. And then onto that door, you can actually add the handle and there's a little clasp on there. So really pleased with how that looked. And there's all that riveting detail again. A lot easier than putting all that photo etching. And there we have the, what you can see. Now you can see that I've put two doors on those back boxes whereas in fact in the film there's only the one and the fact that the one of the boxes the doors to the back of it so i had to quickly take that pe section off and then what i did with some plastic card is just do a little bit of a scratch build on that particular door the reason being you ain't never going to see it because it's behind you and i also did a little missing bracket that supports that box as well but at least you and i know that it, that detail is there now there's a couple of handles as well that need to be made up and that was done using 0.4 mil wire and a couple of straps uh, from the spares drawer and these handles go on both sides as you can see i've added a little bit of rivet detail in there as well there's also a little uh, buzzer or little switch by the back door again once it's built you're not going to see it but at least we know it's there and that was done with little scraps uh, that were on the uh, table at the time with a little rivet in the middle. Now there are shed loads of screw heads on this uh, vehicle and there was no way I was going to do it all. So I've just basically done the strategic ones. Just a matter of getting a little handheld micro drill out. Um, drilling out as much of uh, the screw heads as I wanted to do. Now you always get a little bit of residue in there. Uh, so the best way to get rid of the residue is just get the end of the uh, your craft knife give it a quick twiz twizzle and that takes out all of that debris and then once you're happy with that um, it's a matter of getting some milliput or some putty whatever you, you prefer to use uh, apologies for it being a little bit blurry here but I'm basically just really forcing that into all of those holes and then once that's done um, I just run my finger over it with my gloves on just to take off uh, the excess and then I get my, get the end of a knife and then with the end of the knife it's just a matter of very gently putting a little line across to give the impression of the top of a screw. It's not going to be brilliant especially at this at scale but at least you'll see the difference. Now the back doors, we had a couple of knobbly little catches. I have no idea why they're there. They're certainly not on my research vehicles, uh, but it's on the film, so they had to be added. So I just put a little bit of uh, styrene rod there. Again, a beading missed off, so that had to be done. Drilled through the catches where the padlock goes. Decided to leave the handle as is, just scribed it out a little bit to make it more prominent. And again, on this side, similar detailing and a little catch was put in on the side so not a great deal of detailing needed to be done on the back door which i was pleased with as for the roof not the best of fits so that was clamped and glued overnight and then we had uh, some pe discs that were then added along with some rivets as well that came with the kit itself now there's a couple of famous scenes in the film where the infamous shovel turns up. This one was taken out from the uh, left hand side. There is another bit where it's taken out on the right hand side. So I decided to add it to the left hand side. Just used a little PE uh, scraps from the um, spares drawer. Now on this side, as you can see, I've done a little bit more of the uh, screw heads. Also done some beading that was missed off. There we have the shovel in place. And there's the um, green stuff canvas, which looks really good. And there's that little PE disc with the uh, three rivets added. And then we come round, uh, we have all of the uh, patches that we uh, showed earlier. Now I missed that, uh, I lost that little hinge for the back door, 
but I did a deep clean of my room and amazingly I found it I don't know how I got away with it but I found it as you can see there the fit wasn't brilliant it's a little bit of filler we got the canvas on the back there as well and there we have uh, the door the switch and those little handles both sides you also see the uh, rifle uh, class they those do not appear in the film so I actually took those off and blanked them off and I've put a little bit of strip at the back just to cover up the hole that was there but yeah all in all really pleased with how that was uh, all now looking we put uh, some rivet detail on top as well there's that little fan and obviously all the screw heads at the top as well All right, while I take a, a swig of the uh, strong stuff, I'll leave you just a few uh, pictures to have a look. Now, the uh, back step, uh, the kit part, not brilliant, um, but I could use it as a base. Uh, fortunately, there was a, some lovely PE detailing with, with some riveted tread and also the central panel uh, was a PE uh, section as well so that all went together really well uh, good good one for Eduard nicely designed and also a couple of meng nuts that were missing off the uh, kit part were put at the top there as well as for the underneath there's a couple of boxes the one that you can see just added some rivet detail that one I'm leaving off because I won't be able to fit the parts together with it on um, as for the back boxes the kit parts weren't really up to it so it meant that I was now going to have to uh, make my own one for the water and one for the fuel can on the other side and really it was just a matter of oh first off I used uh, the mini art uh, ones for uh, placement in the kit and what I did was to cut using the RB tools guillotine lots of uh, strips all the same size and it was just a matter of building up um, a structure here I've got some riveted detailing for the base for it all to anchor itself onto um, and then just added the strips into forming a box now as far as the mud guards go the rear ones uh, the little flappy bits had to be cut off um, and a little bit of detailing done as you can see here they are rather thick if you if you cast your mind back to that photo we just seen from the fill they're extremely thin so it's a matter of getting the sander out and very gently obviously we're taking off detail but it's not an issue because we can add that on later very gently sanding that down and making it as thin as we dare this one came out really well very pleased with that however I got a little bit excited with the other one and and, and burnt it um, so that needed a little bit of repair but uh, no, nothing too major all good fun all part of the modeling process so there we have it there you can see the repairs there are the boxes uh, the fuel can and the water can added on the extra detailing with a bit of strip and some meng nuts and then just scribed in the uh, recess lines and altogether not too bad obviously the um, the cans will come out and get painted separately but all in all i was really pleased so there we go guys that that that's the end of this particular part so that's the rear end uh, done top and bottom um it just leaves me to say thank you very much indeed for your continued support of this build a massive thank you to my subscribers new and old and as with all of these videos in this series i shall leave you with some off the uh, sets behind the scenes photos in the meantime happy modeling everybody